Good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to today's webinar, uh, which we're hosting in conjunction with, with NTA. Uh, my name is Jens Helberg, and I'm the Managing Director of Truck Science. Uh, we partnered with NTA uh, last year to provide members with a next level solution for calculating axle weights. And I extend a special welcome to all members uh, joining us this morning. Optimizing payload is a crucial step in any commercial vehicle operation. Uh, whether it's in the design, manufacturing, or operational domain. Uh, this webinar will cover some of the uh, principles and techniques involved in, um, in this process and aim to answer your questions uh, about why, when, and how to apply them. We'll build on the previous two webinars in our Calculating Axle Weights series. The first one dealt, uh, dealt with which information you need for your calculations and where to find it. Uh, and the second one took a deep dive into vehicle design optimization by adding pusher and tag axles. Both of these webinars are available online in case you missed them. And I'll explain how to access these and other resources at the end of this webinar. I'm joined uh, by Serco O'Grady, uh, who will moderate the chat and help with your questions as we go through the session. So we'll look at a number of strategies um, today, including uh, illustrating the importance of positioning the payload in relation to the front and rear axles, uh, making sure the tongue weight is within um, acceptable limits when pulling a center axle drawbar trailer, highlighting potential issues with uh, in multi-drop scenarios, and how to calculate maximum achievable payload. And we'll also cover verifying overall center of gravity. We'll be using three real life examples to illustrate these strategies. First up will, uh, will be a Ford F350 um, with service body and center axle drawbar trailer carrying machinery and equipment. Next, we'll use a Kenworth T370 with refrigerated van body carrying palletized freight in a multi-drop operation. And lastly, we'll again use the Kenworth T370 but this time with a tanker body carrying uh, diesel and gasoline. So let's dive deeper into these scenarios using the axle weight calculator. We'll start off by selecting our vehicle from the database of OEM specs. Uh, we'll take a Ford Super Duty 4x2 uh, F350. And you'll notice that the, that the front and rear chassis weights uh, of the default spec have been pre-populated and that we're validating our build against the US federal size and weight regulations. Now let's go ahead and add a service body. I'll go for one of the nap service bodies um, designed for this F350. And I'll just drag it slightly backwards to align it with the rear axle. Uh, if I wanted to custom design a body, uh, I could have gone from uh, I could have gone for the service body template, uh, which gives me free reign in terms of weights and dimensions. Another alternative is for me to import uh, my own DXF drawing of of one of the bodies in my range. I'll also add a crane. And I'll, I'll drag it into position around about, around about there. Right, and that, that completes my, my build. Now let's say for argument's sake uh, that we have a diesel engine that needs to be collected from a, from a building site and brought back to the workshop for repairs. I'll, uh, I'll load that. And uh, immediately we see an overload. We can see that the front axle is slightly over, uh, but we can also see that uh, by, the, by the overload row here on the weights table at the bottom, that the rear axle has uh, a fair amount of spare capacity, just under two and a half thousand pounds. So I'll just move this engine up slightly, position in a more realistic spot. And you'll see as I drag it backwards, 
and position the, and, and move the load center towards the rear axle. We, we take advantage of that spare capacity on the, on the rear axle and uh, the load becomes legal. Now, uh, now let's add a trailer to, to that combination. Um, we'll choose a center axle drawbar trailer and have it pull a bobcat to and from the same uh, building site. First, we'll need to add a hitch. And I'll drag it into position around about there. And then we'll add the, the trailer. Now I've, I've taken a, a bit of a shortcut here and I've um, saved a trailer previously. Um, I've, I've used our, the template functionality, which gives you free reign on weights and dimensions. Um, and it also allows you to save your, your trailers and equipment and whatnot to your, either your personal library or, or to the library of your team that you can share with, the, with, your, with your team members. Go ahead and add that. And now I'll add a bobcat to the trailer and now note that the vehicle is initially overloaded due to the uh, due to the additional load transferred by the hitch. So you can see that the additional tongue weight of one and a half thousand pounds is just pushing that rear axle slightly over. Uh, by default, the bobcat has been placed um, at, the, at the very front of the trailer, but we can experiment um, with its positioning and see what effect it has on the tongue weight. Dragging it a bit further backwards towards the rear axle um, reduces the tongue weight and, and the load on the vehicle's rear axle becomes legal again. We can see that the tongue weight is shown on the drawing as a total weight uh, and also expressed as a percentage um, of the gross trailer weight. This percentage is a crucial factor uh, in the stability of the vehicle and ensuring that the driven axles have sufficient traction. It's important to comply with the hitch manufacturer's uh, recommendation when specking a combination like that. Uh, dragging it too far back, around about there, you can see the uh, the load percentage becomes negative, um, which is a which causes a lifting effect um, on the hitch, which might not be desirable in your scenario. So I'll go ahead and undo that. And now that we've um, specced our vehicle, let's generate a, a PDF. And we can add some additional notes here for our customer. Uh, John, and um, we just want to make sure that that bobcat is placed correctly. Uh, so I'll add an additional note here and say bobcat must be placed um, or over the rear axles to prevent overloading on edge. Let's go ahead and, uh, and refresh that PDF. And it gives you a nice breakdown of uh, the loads as well as where to where to position them and also uh, covers you with your additional notes as well as any notes and warnings um, that you might have generated but in this case the vehicle is totally uh, totally legal right um, just want to check in there with Sarka. are there any uh, questions at this stage uh, there are no questions at this stage Okay, um, so let's move on to our, to our next example, uh, which is a Kenworth T370. So I'll select that from our, uh, from our library. I'll take six by four. And I'll go ahead and add a, add a box body. So if you remember, we, we're building a, a refrigerated body for, for palletized freight. So I'll take the box body and um, I'll just increase the width from, from 96 inches to a maximum of 102. 
because uh, I'd like to maximize the floor space for, for my pallets. And I'll also go ahead and add a refrigeration unit and I'll take the, uh, the Thermoking P600. Now you can see that the unit is going to, inter is going to interfere with the cab. Um, so we'll need to increase the height of the body um, to address this. So I'll click on the body height dimension at the rear here and just push it up until we get sufficient clearance. Maybe, maybe around there. Uh, to complete our, our configuration, I'll add a lift gate. And I'll pick the Antio 22C. Right. Um, now that we have our, our vehicle configured, let's add the payload. This vehicle will be used for palletized freight. So I'll select the standard um, GMA pallet. So it's placed a single pallet uh, in the side view there. I'll just move on onto the top view um, so I can arrange the pallet exactly how I want it. And I'll just give it a bit of clearance on the, the front and the sides to allow for some airflow between the, between the pallets. I'll copy that pallet and then position the, the second row how I want it. Roughly, roughly like that. And then I'll go ahead and copy. Uh, now to, to fully accommodate these uh, two rows of six pallets, uh, we'll need to increase the, the length of the body slightly because there's, there's an overlap there. So I'll just go and tweak the body length you can see as I, as I click on the plus, it just edges that length up so until we've got sufficient space. And I'll then go ahead and copy the second row. I've chosen to make the pellets um, the same weight for this example, but you can adjust their weight individually. Uh, and I'll demonstrate this in our, uh, in our next example. A few things to note here are, are the various um, load centers or centers of gravity. And I'll just switch to the, to the center of gravity view so we have a better look at this. Uh, here you can see the lateral load center is uh, 0.7 um, from the center line of the vehicle. Uh, I, I must have I must have got my the, the spacing just wrong there. Maybe not not quite equal. I see I see the the first row is positioned slightly further in than the in the second row, uh, and I can also look at um, my horizontal and vertical centers of gravity here to see whether they uh, whether whether I'm happy with those. We can also check the the static rollover angle by drilling down into the notes. And in this case, um, the rollover angle is 28 uh, degrees. The static rollover angle is the angle at which um, the vehicle will fall over if tilted sideways. So if we're okay with all this, uh, we can go ahead and generate our load plan. And I'll just switch back to the top view for that. And that'll generate a, a a nice plan for the driver and uh, which will give them an overview of where to place the pallets um, for their multi drop off route. As a final check, uh, let's make sure that they won't be overloaded at any point. So I'll just have a look at the side view again. Um, and I'll offload the, the two rear pallets. Oh, uh, well. Sorry, I copied that instead of uh, removing it. So I'll, I'll remove that one and I'll go ahead and remove the, 
And you'll notice now, as I, as I remove the last row, um, the front ax the load center has shifted further towards the front axle, and the front axle has now become overloaded. Um, so the driver is in danger of being pulled over and fined uh, in the middle of his journey, even though the original load was legal. To prevent this issue, we could either move pallets to the rear of the vehicle uh, as we offload, or spec the truck with a stronger front axle to begin with. So um, before we move on to our, our next example, are there any questions that have come up in the meantime? First one is that Bill was asking if you could point out the weight of the crane on the PDF report for the previous calculation. So if you want to uh, do that, I can address the other questions that have been raised in the meantime. So it's just to point out where the weight of the crane was indicated on the PDF report in the previous. Okay. Um, I, I might just generate a, a, the PDF of this calculation um, and I'll be able to show you where the weight of the fridge or the lift gate um, is and, and the crane will be in a similar position. So we've got the center of gravity and, um, and weight distribution for the vehicle and you can see all of all of the vehicle's components so uh, there's the thermo king and the antio um, and in the case of the previous example you there, there would have been a row there for the crane and you can see its uh, centers of gravity and uh, it's the, the total weight of the component and its distribution over the front and the rear i hope that um that answers the question. Uh, the next question was about whether the clearance between the TK unit and the top of cab uh, is calculated or where it is shown. Um, and I presume by TK unit, we're talking about the Thermo King um, refrigeration unit. So the answer to that is that it's not shown and indeed it's not calculated. So that's something that I will pass through to our product manager to consider for future development. In all our uh, dealings and conversations, we record all of these ideas that we receive from you. So whenever you have a, an idea like this, if you could just share it with us, it gets included then when we decide what to work on in the, in the coming month or in the next uh, development sprint. So I will pass that through as well. Thank you, Ken. And uh, there was one more suggestion that we would include the compliance scorecard which is currently shown underneath the front axle there uh, with the green and red ticks, that that would be shown on the PDF report also. So again, that's a suggestion I will pass through to the product manager. And if anybody else would also like to see that added, um, please add your voice to that feature, which will ensure it will get uh, to the top of the queue that little bit quicker. Okay, and the, the next question um, is, can we get the weight distribution per wheel? So I presume that's referring to the tandem, the rear axles two and three, and currently uh, we do not calculate the split between those axles. If a pusher axle is added, we will show the breakdown between the pusher and the tandem, but we don't currently calculate the split between two and three. And there are a couple of more questions coming in here. Is the weight of fuel and placement of fuel tanks taken into consideration? Uh, Jens, if you want to answer that one while I'm just catching up on the next one. Yeah, so uh, there's, a, there's a section here, if you drill down on the vehicle, um, I suppose just to point out that on the drawing, as you move the mouse over the drawing, it highlights the various components. So if you, if, you can, if you select the vehicle and you click on the vehicle, it brings up the menu and there's a host of, of attributes in here. And one of them is, um, is the factory fitted fuel tanks. And indeed, the capacity of the fuel tank and its load center are, are taken into account, as are, are the crew. Um, and well, those are for, uh, for factory fitted fuel tanks, as the, as the name suggests there. You can add additional tanks under, under equipment. Uh, the next question is uh, from Jeff. You mentioned that you can change the weight rating on the axle in this example. The other way would be to move the CT of the chassis. Uh, so that's the cab to tandem dimension, that one can edit the cab to tandem dimension. If you do that, the chassis weight on the front and rear axle does not change to reflect the new axle spacing effect on tear weight distribution. Is that a prob 
a problem? And the answer to that is that, yes, you may need to consider uh, the change in weight on the front and rear axles and update them accordingly, but the app does not do that automatically. And I'll, I'll, show you, I'll show you how to do that, actually, in our next example, because we'll be taking the, the same Kenworth T370 and reducing the, the wheelbase and, and the rear overhang. So uh, I'll show you how to do that now in a second. Uh, there's another question that's just come in here, Jens, and that's from Joe. Are there alternative fuel options such as CNG and LPG and tank placement? And there's another one after that. So if you want to go with that one, are there alternative fuel options such as CNG and LPG and tank placement? Um, okay, so uh, so on the uh, like I've opened a, a manufacturer spec. So this particular Kenworth is a is a diesel vehicle. Um, if you you can still override the fuel specific gravity, and you can then uh, by doing that you can model um, CNG or, or other fuels. Uh, alternatively, if you opened a vehicle template, which um, I might just show you here. Uh, we have a library of, of manufacturer specs, but we also have templates, which which are fully flexible, and you can you can drill down into them and change the fuel type and the, the fuel tanks and and whatnot. So um, the answer is yes, we can cater for that in templates, but the manufacturer spec is uh, is the manufacturer spec. Okay, and while you're on that screen, Jens, the next question is um, from Jeff. How extensive is the chassis library and is this updated via software updates or does the user add the chassis as needed? And I'll just quickly answer that one. So Jens, if you just want to bring up the manufacturer spec uh, full library there. Um, so as you can see, Jeff, that we have uh, vehicles from a number of different manufacturers. These are vehicles that have been requested by other users in the past as well as some full ranges that are added in there. But if there is a particular vehicle that you need and it's not yet in the library, you can use a template, as Jens just mentioned there, which is a very flexible sort of a blank template that you build up yourself from a spec sheet. Uh, however, the graphic will not be true to life then. It will be this more sort of generic graphic. And the third option, so you can choose from the manufacturer library, use a template, or the third option is to use that button on the right to request a vehicle, and our team will add the vehicle for you. It's also important to point out this um, this chat bubble at the bottom here. Uh, if you if you have any questions uh, for us for our support team, you can always send us a message here, and uh, they'll respond to you within the app. I see um, according to our stats there, our usual reply time is under ten minutes. And then there is another question before we move on. How well will this work for emergency vehicles, vehicle designs, fire trucks, or command vehicles with slide out rooms? I know that we have a number of users who are using it for fire vehicles, but if there's a particular example, Jeff, um, I'd be happy to go take that offline with you and we could run through a particular example and, and you can tell me then how well it works. But yes, a number of, of users do design uh, fire trucks and emergency vehicles. Uh, there's one more question before you move on, Jens. Do you update chassis data every year? You can ask for vehicles on request and we do update ranges, some popular ranges every year as well. Um, but in general, if you don't find the, the vehicle you're looking for, and you'll see, if you look at this screen that, that Jens has opened right now, on the very right of that table, you can see the spec date. So the Kenworth is a, a 2020 vehicle and the first one, the second one is a, a 2016 spec. So you can always see if it's a, a current spec and if you need a more recent one, just ask us to add it. Well, uh, okay, for our, for our last example, we'll take, uh, so like I said, we'll take that same Kenworth um, and I'll reduce the, the wheelbase and rear overhang because I'll um, I'm going to be putting a tanker body onto it. So I'll just click on that dimension and reduce that to 47. Now, um, so as as one of the as one of the attendees pointed out there, um, you know the the chassis weights will have changed as a result. So ideally, you'd you'd confirm that with uh, with, the, with the, the dealership. Um, in this case, I'm just going to I'll take I'll take off. 100 pounds from the front and the rear. 
data for that roughly. And I'll go ahead and add a tanker body. I'm just using a template again, and I'll just I'll just move that back ever so slightly. Like that. And I'll also add um, add a pump and uh, metering equipment. And I'll do that by using using a template. Now I could have I could have imported um, imported the the drawing from a DXF file to make it a bit more realistic, um, but but by using the template, uh, you'll still get perfectly accurate results as long as you put the correct data. So I'll just tweak it. First of all, I'll, I'll just give it a name and I'll say uh, pump and metering equipment. So that we can, so that we know, uh, so we can see it on the table and in the, uh, the PDF, and I'll adjust the dimensions, and I'll set the weight at, oh, at a thousand pounds, and then I'll drag it into position. I'll go up there, and I'll just move to the top view so I can position it laterally as well. So I'll just attach it to the chassis there. Right. So now that we've configured the vehicle, um, I'll work out the, uh, what the maximum achievable payload is. And uh, for this example, we'll, we'll assume that the, uh, that the tank has a single compartment, but then I'll, I'll drill down a bit deeper and add a few compartments to make it, uh, make it more realistic. So I'll just pin this uh, the payload load center. Uh, we'll, we'll need these dimensions now in a minute for, my, for the calculations. Uh, and you can see here that the, that the maximum payload has already been calculated by the app for us. So I'll just make a note of that there. It's, uh, it's 27,250 pounds. But, uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and zero that so we can calculate it from, from first principles. So uh, we can see the spare capacity on the rear axle is 23,694 pounds. So we're gonna to need to do a bit of bit of math here. So I'll just grab my calculator and I'll take the spare capacity, 23,694, and I'll multiply it by um, the wheelbase. So we're calculating the, the turning moments. Multiply it by the wheelbase and I'll divide it by the distance um, from the payload load center to the front axle. So that's 230 minus, and you can see the distance to the rear axle is 40.5. So the distance to the front axle will be the wheelbase minus that distance. So 140.5. And that gives us a result of 28,757, which is the maximum payload that the rear axle can handle for this load center. So I'll need to do the same calculation for the front axle and then take the minimum of the two of the two calculations. So for the front axle, I can see the, the spare capacity is 4798. And I'll, again, I'll multiply that by the wheelbase and divide it by the load center, uh, the distance of the load center to the rear axle, which is 40.5. That gives me um, 27,247. And that's just about what the app had calculated for us, which is 27,250. So there's a, there's a few rounding things there on the go that I haven't taken into account. But yeah, so we've, um, we've got to the same, the same answer there and we figured out what the, what the maximum achievable payload is. Now, um, you can see on the weights table here that just by this blue highlight and the fact that there's an overload of zero pounds on the front axle, you can see that the front axle is the limiting factor in this calculation. So that tells me that uh, we could possibly squeeze a bit more payload out of this. Um, and if the, the horizontal center of gravity is 50%, we can push it over a bit towards the rear and take advantage of this extra 1,200 pounds. And I'll just go ahead and do that and make that 51%. And I would expect the, the achievable payload to increase, which it then does. 
to 28 and a half. So, so we're ga gaining about a thousand pounds by just shifting that load center ever so slightly. And you can then see that the rear axle has now become the limiting factor. So, so we're pretty much at the maximum here. Right, so um, I'll, uh, I'll make it a bit more realistic and I'll, I'll add a few compartments. And I'll call this uh, compartment number one. And I'll say we, we're filling that with diesel. And I'll adjust the, uh, the length. And instead of specifying the weight, I'm going to specify the volume. And I'll say I'm going to load 1,300 gallons into this tank. And now the density of the, of the diesel is 6.843 pounds per gallon. And that will get me just under 9,000 pounds in that tank. Now I'll, um, I'll copy the, the other two tanks. I'll just create a copy there and another copy. And I'll drill down into this one and I'll say, uh, I'm going to add gasoline in this tank. And I've got 1,300 gallons, but the density of gasoline is slightly less dense than, than diesel. So I'll, I'll just adjust that. And we can now see that there's, you know, while the first tank had around 9,000 pounds worth of uh, diesel, this is now the same volume is giving me just over 8,000 pounds. So if I had a bit, bit of extra space in the tank, I might squeeze in another 100 gallons, and that'll give me a similar weight. I'll then just go to the last compartment, compartment three, and I'll leave the same volume of diesel in that, in that tank. Right, so that's, that gives us a reasonably um, well-balanced vehicle there. We, we're pretty close on the front axle. If you see over here, there's, we've got about 29 pounds of spare capacity and about 1,800 on the rear. And you can move those tanks around um, you know, to try and optimize that. Now we touched on the diminishing load issue um, in, our, in the previous example and where the vehicle became illegal when we offloaded the, the two rearmost pellets. So the same issue occurs here. If I, if I were to pump out the last tank, I'm just emptying those 1,300 gallons, you'll see that uh, the, the front axle overloads quite badly. So it's just something to look out for again in this scenario. I'll just undo that. Uh, and uh, now finally, we should also check the, the overall center of gravity. Now, especially in a tanker scenario, the, the vertical center of gravity can, you know, can sometimes become an issue. One just has to be aware of it and look at that uh, measurement there, the 64.6, and compare that um, with, with the OEM's recommendation and make sure it falls within the acceptable range. Now, lastly, we can uh, we can generate that that PDF again, and it gives you a nice load plan there again of of you need to pump thirteen hundred gallons of diesel in the first tank, fourteen hundred in the second. Oh, I've I've named that compartment one again, but yeah, uh, and then thirteen hundred diesel in the last tank. Are there any questions on that example? No questions have come through so far anyway. So what have we learned? In the, in the first example, we, we saw the effects of moving the diesel engine slightly towards the rear axle and saw the impact of, on tongue weight when moving the bobcat. In the second example, we saw how to plan a load of pelletized freight and the dangers of overloading in a multi-drop scenario. And finally, we calculated the maximum achievable payload of the tanker uh, of the tanker body from first principles, then tweak the example to add individual compartments and calculate the center of gravity. Now, I mentioned earlier that pre the previous webinars are available online. Uh, we'll also publish this webinar and send you the link soon. You can find these and other resources by either going to our website at truckscience.com uh, from within our app in the, in the newly released um, resources section. And I might just uh, 
show you that section for for any existing customers that are on the on the webinar. Yes. While while you were still in that calculation, Tom wanted to know what have you pumped off the front tank first? Are you able to reopen it there for us, please? <laughs> uh, I didn't save that now, uh, but if I if I pump the front tank off first, uh, yeah, you're correct. Um, that uh, if you pump the front tank off first, you, you'll be reducing the load on the front axle because the front axle was was the limiting factor. Um, and by pumping that tank off first and then the last tank, you you wouldn't have been overloaded. But I can click that together now in a minute if there if there's some more questions. I should have really saved that. Sorry. Uh, there's another question here from Ken. So ultimately, instead of changing axle capacities, driver education could be the key to using the configurations shown, correct? Ken, you are indeed correct there. Um, driver education can save you a lot of money in the long run. But, but also also even in the, in the example of the pelletized freight, when I was putting that example together, I noticed that if I would have initially positioned the first pellet an extra one or two inches towards the rear, then offloading the two rearmost pellets wouldn't have caused that overload on the front axle. So it's so it's a combination of load planning and uh, driver education, and then lastly the specking, you know, the specking of the of the axles. Just point out those those resources to you. Uh, so you can drill down here and you can see all the all these um, tutorials. Uh, they're, they're explainer videos that you can click down into and, and run. Uh, if you if you found the the content relevant, I would encourage you to follow us on on LinkedIn, Facebook, or, or YouTube, and we'll keep you up to date about further webinars and and other events. Uh, lastly, if you'd like to try the axle weight calculator app yourself, you can visit truckscience.com to register for a fully functional free trial. The NTA membership entitles you to an extended free trial of thirty days, and members are also entitled to an exclusive discount of fifty dollars off the regular price of four four nine per year. I will end this webinar shortly, but before you go, please rate the webinar and leave any comments or suggestions you'd like to share with us. Uh, also, if you'd like to set up a personalised demo of that, uh, we would be more than happy to arrange it. Thank you very much. Bye.